I missed that whole minute there. Uh, so we should get started. So welcome to your Saturday evening Paint and Sip with Smudge. I'm super excited to have you all here for our first evening of workshop while we're all kind of in a different realm of life right now. So thank you so much for joining me. My name is Paige. I am the owner of Smudge Art Studio and I am going to be your instructor this evening. We are going to tackle our brand new Coastal Sunset Masterpiece. So this one I painted three weeks ago now, I think. Um, and I did it on a small canvas. So this is the first time, because when I do my testers, I just do them on a small one. This is the first time I'll be doing it on a big one. Um, so of course, any painting will never turn out the same as I did the first time. It's a painting, not a photograph, so I do want you to keep that in mind. So set aside any expectations that you have for this masterpiece. And I just want you to sit back, relax, and have a wonderful evening painting. Um, I'm worried that during this time we haven't taken enough time to create. Um, doing art is just so good for the soul. It increases your serotonin, it decreases your cortisol, it just like reduces your stress and gets you in a different zone. And I think we're all just kind of dealing with a different life right now. And I, I believe that that's really important. So thank you so much for joining me. So before we get started, um, I just want to go through some things that you should have in front of you. So you should have a canvas. We are going to work on a 16 by 20 canvas this evening. For those of you who did not get an outlined canvas from Smudge, don't worry, you'll be fine. Um, in all honesty, these outlines are more ish lines than necessary lines anyway. So for those of you who did get your um, canvases outlined by me, we will be painting over some of them anyway, but you'll be able to see it through, um, through what we paint. So you want to have your canvas. The other thing you want to make sure that you have is paper towel because you are going to want to wipe, rinse, and wipe your brush before and after you rinse it. Especially because artists you are painting at home, you don't want this paint to go down your drain, um, so the paper towel will become your best friend. The other thing that you'll want is a jar of water along with your brushes. So I have three sizes of brushes. I have a large, medium, and a small brush. You may want your paper plate palette and you will want your paint color. So I'm just going to use red, yellow, um, black and white this evening and that's it. So let's get started. So the first thing that you want to do is we're going to start with our large brush and if your brush isn't wet yet, you may just want to do that just to get the bristles together a little bit. And then you're going to take your paper towel and you're just going to give it a gentle squeeze. Uh, just be really soft with it. Get that water out of your bristles because you don't want to have um, water running down your canvas while you do this. So we are going to start with yellow. And artists, just so you know, for those of you who just joined us, if you actually take a look in the chat, um, there is the reference uh, picture. So if you do want to look at the original one, you can. Sorry, I'm just gonna look again. I should have left it here, it's in my garage. Um, okay, perfect, yes. Oops, okay, perfect. So you're going to take your big brush and we're just gonna start with plain yellow. And the, you wanna get a lot of paint on your brush because we're gonna, we're painting a large canvas, we need good coverage. So you wanna have a large um, brush full of paint and we are just going to lay down the paint right above our horizon line there and we're just going to go back and forth about a third of the way up-ish. And yes, you can paint over top of your lines because our mountains are going to be black anyway. Can you guys see that okay? You let me know if not, right? And I am a little worried about this um, sunshine coming around my house. And the other thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this down a little bit. And 
because my, so this is what you need to decide where you want your sun to actually be setting. This time I'm going to put it kind of over a little bit. I think in the original one I had it behind the hill here. So you may just want to move this yellow over. Artists, don't think about this even too much. And honestly, <laughs> that's, that's all the paint that I'm using for right now anyway. All right. Once you've done that, artists, you're going to want to wipe, rinse, and wipe your brush. So really, there is no thinking about this. You're putting yellow on your brush, and you're just pulling it in horizontal strokes um, above your horizon line first, about a third-ish of the way up. And then we're going to go down, and we're just going to start to fill this water a little bit. Um, don't even worry. If you're like, oh my gosh, Paige, I went to the edge. That's fine. Don't worry about it. I'm just going to go kind of down in the middle here. Um, we are going to get a little bit mixy. This is the first layer of your paint. So artists, please let me know if you can't see me. I think I'm going to have a really cool shadow here soon. Maybe I'll step back a little bit. <laughs> Sorry. Things you figure out and you're like, oh right, that sun, it moves during the day. Silly me. And no, I don't have blinds on my kitchen window. Maybe I should. Maybe that would be better. All right. So once you've done your yellow, honestly, don't even think. Just lay down your paint, wipe, rinse, and wipe your brush. And we're going to dip right into our red. So artists, you don't have to use these colors. If you're doing a different color scheme, that's totally fine. You just want to make sure that your colors can mix together. So, yes. I have two reds here. Ooh. Uh, from the studio. One is kind of an orangey red, or the other one's red red. Okay, so the red red is probably the magenta. I'm using the fire red, which is the orangey red. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay, so, right, red on my brush. And this time, artist, I'm just going to take these streaks across the top here. And again, we're not even worrying about it. This is going to look a little, well, stripey at first, but we're going to get mixy, I promise you. We're gonna smudge these colors in together. And artists, don't even, like, don't worry, okay? So notice I'm mix missing some pieces here. That's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect at this point. We're just kind of filling in some space. The other thing you can do is you can take this red down into your water. I'm going over top of my lines. This is just a base coat. We are just filling in space. And I'm like not even filling it in, right? <laughs> you can probably see. All right. So artists, now what we're actually going to do is we're going to wipe, rinse, and wipe our brush. And this time we're going to fill in where our sunshine is. Now my sun is, is white. It was just white is all that I took. So, and it's not even going to be a circle. So I don't even want you to think of it as a circle. When you get to this point, and sorry, I know I'm going a little fast. I don't want my yellow to completely dry though. You're just going to do horizontal strokes to blend that yellow in. I could probably do this later too. So if you if you're not here yet or you want to do it later, that's totally fine. But I'm just doing horizontal strokes and moving up slowly, kind of like a pyramid, I guess, but not so pointy. This is a, a sunshine that is fading. I'm only going to go up that high for right now. Okay, so literally, I slapped on the paint like we, this is not filled in. Put in a bit of red at the top, put in a bit of red down here, put in some yellow down here. Now comes the fun part. We're going to fill in the rest of this and we are going to get smudgy. So once you have some red done, you have some yellow done, 
You're going to slap in some weight here. And literally, I mean, slap this in. Like, don't think about it. This isn't a perfect half circle. These are horizontal lines that just kind of slowly come together. And we're not gonna go all the way up to a pyramid, but all it does is it just lightens. It's like a blurry sunset. It's a blurry sun. So pretty, eh? I love messy paintings, obviously. All right, now we're gonna get mixy. So we're gonna move back to our big brush. And this time, artists, I kinda want you to double dip a little bit. No, I want you to double dip, who am I kidding? Can you slow down a bit? Yeah. I, so I can, except you don't want this to dry because you want to, you want these colors to smudge together. So yes, mine is still wet. I can slow down a bit. All right. Don't worry if you're not here yet. I just want to show you what's coming up. So in between your orange, or your yellow and your red is going to be your orange and you are going to make your own orange. You're simply going to double dip and get some yellow and some red on your brush. And you're just gonna start blending it in between here. Oh, look how smudgy that gets. I love it. So if you love those smudges, don't go over them too much. The, the more you go over top of them, the more they'll turn into one shade of orange. And you can take these smudges down here. You can take these smudges up here. Now this, I want you to enjoy. So the other one was just slapping on paint. We're just getting a base coat on. Now we're actually creating our sky. And so we're going to double dip. We're going to get some yellow and some red on our brush. And very lightly using horizontal strokes, I am just going to lay down this paint. You may want to turn your brush on its side so you can get some thin lines. Maybe you want to add some yellow streaks up here. Maybe you want to blend it in a little bit more. There really isn't any right or wrong way to do this other than you want to have yellow down closer to your sun and you want to get a little bit more dark the further up that we go. Actually, what I'm thinking of is, Kendra, I think you, oh, and Jellian did too, I think, joined me for the giraffes. Is anyone else? A Tom and Susan, I think you guys might have done the giraffes too. This is the exact same thing, exactly the same. The giraffes might have been a little bit more blended in though. This one, we are gonna get streaky. So you can see I'm just literally so I've, I've slowed down a lot, right? Like before I was just slapping it on. Now we're enjoying. Now we are creating our sky. The more that you go over top of your paint, the more that you paint over top of it, the more that it's going to turn into one orange. So you may um, want to just leave it and let it dry. What I will say is acrylic paint does dry fairly quickly. So if you don't like something, you can just let it dry and paint right over top of it. Honestly, artists, if you could feel how lightly I'm touching this, um, it's like I'm, uh, I don't even know, it's like painting with a feather. Like I'm, I'm hardly touching at all. I just want to lay down some streaks of paint and just enjoy this whole process. I'm gonna show you another little smudgy trick, if you want. You could also start to smudge in some white in here too. and it will just soften it up a little bit. What I will say is start with a little bit and add more if you want to. Maybe start somewhere that you don't really care about, <laughs> if that makes sense, because if you don't like it, then you don't want to add anymore. 
So you could probably hardly see this artist, but I'm literally taking the smallest amount of white and just adding some white streaks in my sky. You need to always make sure that you're doing horizontal strokes. But isn't it so nice when you can just smudge these colors in together and they just make the most beautiful, beautiful sky. And you're just going to keep flipping back and forth until you are happy with it. Do you go over top of your mountain lines because, ah, oh, mountain lines. Do you go over top of your, whatever, your mountain lines um, because the sky doesn't stop at your mountain, right? So if you take those lines across, because we are going to be painting them black, you'll just get a little bit more realistic um, look to your masterpiece. So I'm literally just taking pure white, or pure red, part of me, and just adding some red streaks in where I want. Another thing you may wanna do is you may wanna take some color around the sides of your canvas, and maybe even the top and the bottom if it's laying down, or if it's not touching anything, you don't want to get acrylic paint on anything cloth-like because it will stain. However, even I would even say even with wood, like just watch on wood. But anything that is um, like a stone or anything like that, it should just scrub off fairly well. So don't worry, we're not done yet. We're not even close to starting anything else. Just want you to enjoy laying down your paint. Take a step back from your painting so you can see what it looks like. I think I'm gonna add some more yellow streaks in, but I know if I do that right now, it's going to smudge in too much. Hmm. And then you're gonna get these beautiful hues of orange. All these different and honestly, I'm being so, so light with my brush. The more that you press with your bristles, the wider your bristles spread. So um, if you don't want that, ooh, that was a cool smudge. Um, just press very lightly. Like I'm hardly pressing at all. It's like a blurry, I don't know, blurry photo. But I am making sure that all of my strokes are horizontal. So follow that horizon line throughout your piece. You know what, artists, I really like my sky. I'm gonna stop right there. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna stop right there with my sky. Don't be afraid to get all the way down to your horizon line because our next step is going to be to do the same thing with the water except instead of using the face of our brush to get a wide line, we're going to use our brush on its side to get thinner lines. So if you're already done your sky, you could move on to your water and it's the exact same thing except this time we are using our brush on its side to get these thin strokes, not on our face to get the wide strokes. Okay, so on our side to get the thin strokes. And that is after the sky. So when you're happy with the sky, you can move right onto the water. Something you may want to consider is how much red you're putting in the middle here, because technically, if we're doing this, this is gonna come out kind of like a, kind of like a, a ray, right? So it's entirely up to you if you want to be technical about it. I mean, we have to remember this is a painting, not a photograph. So it's just going to be fun, just however it turns out. So pretty. So artists, just enjoy laying down your paint, enjoy smudging those colors together. Go over top of your lines, don't worry about it. We are going to be using black.
but I am using, for the water, I am using my brush on its side to get a really thin line. And you still want to keep your strokes horizontal. Artists, we are going to add in some waves. So this is, again, just our base coat. Our waves are fun. They're going to be like a, a peachy, well, mine are going to be peachy. And you do want to take this paint throughout your water, okay? So don't be scared. Just make sure that your lines are always horizontal. See, I'm not even really getting that, that ray, sort of. And I'm not worried about it. It's going to look really good however it turns out. What I love about this one is just messy. Whatever you do, just make sure you're filling in your canvas. Artists, if you have any questions at all, please unmute your mic and ask me. And the other nice thing about going down to your, your water is you're, if you're like, hey, you know what? I want to add another streak up here. It gives time for your sky to dry. So just enjoy laying down your paint. Get those beautiful tropical streaks in there. You know what, I'm just gonna add, am I? No, I'm not gonna add any white streaks in. I'm gonna do the white streaks while we're gonna lighten it up for the waves. So we're not gonna do that just yet. If you lose your horizon line, it's okay. We're going to um, distinguish that with our mountains. Don't forget to go right down to the bottom of your canvas. Mine's kind of hiding here on my easel. Are you guys making some beautiful oranges? So try to keep your brush on its side to get some thin strokes, whereas up on the top here, we're good with wide strokes. You just enjoy laying down your paint. Artists, we'll work on this for um, another 10-ish minutes or so, so no rush. I'm probably going to finish before you do. It's just gonna look like a streaky, blobby, mess right now. Don't worry, we're going to add some waves. I'm also going to show you how to do a little bit of tashing to get it look like the waves that have a little bit of caps on them. Um, we're going to add some white in here to offset our glow a little bit. We still need to add some black. So this is just the first step of many, but it is the biggest step, right? Like this is a large portion, a large part of the canvas that we're painting in here. Don't be afraid to get messy here. Get smudgy, don't even think. Just erase your brain from last week's chaos or anything that may be coming up this week and just enjoy smudging your colors in. Artists, please ask me if you have any questions. It helps to take a step back from your masterpiece when you're looking at it, just to make sure that you've got all the pieces that you want 
um, that your lines are going in the right direction. That horizontal stroke is really important in this masterpiece. So try to keep it horizontal and not go diagonal. So artists, I think I'm happy with that. I'm going to stop right there. Don't worry if you're not there yet. Um, I'm actually going to go turn up the AC because now that the sun's coming around, it's getting a little warm in here. Um, so I'll let you guys um, continue with that. And we'll move on at, I can't even remember what time it was when I said that. Let's say uh, 5 minutes, 7.33. So I see you want to be happy with your background. Our next step is going to be to go to add in. Awesome. So you guys are amazing. Okay, perfect. So our next step is going to be to add in some waves. Now you don't want to have just pure white for your waves. You want to have a little bit of a peachy. Um, well, I want a peach color. I just kind of want to lighten up the red and the orange, the red and the yellow. Uh, to get a, a peach color, and I'm going to use my medium brush for this on its side so that I can get a thin line. All right. So when you're ready, artists. Now you can see back not towards you. You can mix your peach if you want to, um, but if you the other thing you can do is you can just triple dip on your brush. But to create orange, we're going to mix red and yellow together. And we're going to add just a touch of white. Now you can always um, add more white. I just find it really difficult to take away. All right, so I've got a, ooh, oh, that's a really pretty color. Yeah, yeah, it's so pretty, right? Love that color. All right, so I am going to add in some horizontal strokes. I don't even really have to think too much about where I'm putting these waves. Um, they're going to, we're going to focus on them a little bit more later. You just want to make sure that they're horizontal. Actually, wait, I'm going to back up. I think what I'm going to say is up here, make them closer together, and then down here, have them further apart, if that makes sense. So up here, I have about a centimeter between waves, and then down towards the bottom, I have about two or three centimeters between waves. That is called perspective. <laughs> yeah, mine's a little too, you can't hardly see it. I'm going to try and lighten them up a little bit. And no, this is not just how your waves end, so don't worry. We're going to add some splashes in here. But the further that you go to the horizon line, the closer you want these lines to be together. And they can go in between your sunshine here if you want. So further apart, the closer you get to the bottom, and closer, the closer you get to the top of your horizon line. Actually, I think I'm just going to take this peach and actually go along my horizon line. I think I like that. Not all the way. Yeah, I like that. Mine turned out a little pinky, or maybe it's the sun that's coming around. Okay, so these are going to be our waves. Don't worry, that's not how they're finished. We're going to do some tashing and add some actual waves in with them. But we're going to give them a little bit of time to dry. Our next step is going to be to, um, yeah, we're going to go on to our black um, rocks next and our black, Hill, not our trees yet, okay? So we're not going to do those yet. We're going to go on to black next. So once you've added in just a few horizontal strokes, maybe I've added in a little too many. Um, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> so uh, you'll want to wipe, rinse, and wipe your brush, and we're going to go on to use black. 
So don't worry, those waves aren't done. You still have to add some frothing to them. Some splashes, I guess. Now with our black, we don't really need to do two coats of black. However, you may want to, or there may be pieces on your uh, canvas towards that you notice at the end that you want to go ahead and do um, another coat on. So that being said, you will want to lay this on, but spread it out. You know what? I don't even need my plate. I'm just going to dip right into my black. So I'm using my small brush now, or my medium brush, pardon me. The brush should always do the work for you, okay? So um, you shouldn't be trying to um, make it work, if that makes sense. The edge of your brush is your friend, so let it do the work for you. So whenever we're using black, we are going to outline first and then fill in. So this rock here ends at my horizon line because it's kind of behind that water there. But it's totally up to you. Yours doesn't have to. Artists, these are just ish. Like if you want to take your mountain way up here, rock on, go for it, okay? This is your masterpiece. You can decide. If you're like, oh, I don't really like that spot there. I'm just going to make this a little bit more hilly. Then go for it, okay? You never have to follow our outlines. Maybe you want to take this rock, this mountain, all the way around, even. It's totally up to you. Whatever you do, just fill this in, okay? So I'm just going to go straight to the other side now. So again, outline first. And artists, you don't even have to follow my lines, right? But this coastline kind of comes down, down a little bit. We're kind of in a little lagoon here. And so it's going to go back and forth, and weave in and out. And I'm going to come back and sharpen those lines up a little bit. Now it can be um, pointy. It can be wavy. Right? Coastlines are like that. They're not perfectly straight. You can take this out as far as you want it to. Now, if this is too big of an area for your medium brush to fill in, switch on back to your big brush. You will probably get better coverage and you will probably be happier with the outcome. So I'm going to just switch to my big brush. And I'm just going to fill in that big area, right? Your brush should always fit the area that you're filling in. So honestly, artists, I just outlined first and then filled in with black. This is a silhouette. So I am kind of adding some wavy strokes in there because you will see your strokes when this masterpiece is done. And so if you keep them a little bit wavy, um, it just kind of makes it a little bit more cohesive. I'm taking that black around the side as well. The other thing I want to do is this bottom left-hand corner where my trees are going to sit. So again, outline first and then fill in. And I'm using my big brush because it's a big area. Noticing I might have too much water in my brush, you'll know because it will be really thin. Yeah, your paint will be really thin, so just get that water out of your brush. You want this to be have nice coverage so that you don't have to come back and do it again. But you can. You can easily come back and do a second coat on this, no problem. Okay. So again, artists, we just we're doing the big the big black pieces right now. Then our next step is going to be added to add in some of those rocks. So you can see here, I have my coastline on this side. I have one on this side. I have a little hill down here. Artists, you don't have to do this. You can do whatever you want to do. 
Um, if you received an outline canvas, you can still see these outlines, I think, which is nice. But if you didn't get an outline canvas, that's great. Just add in your coastline as you wish. So I am going to white rinse and wipe my bake brush because I am done with it for actually all of the masterpiece now. So you want to make sure that your brush is really, really clean, that it's never sitting out with paint on it to dry. My next step, I'm going to still continue to use my medium brush. So I'm not going to clean that off just yet. You can, like if you feel that it's getting too big or it's not working for you. Yeah, I think maybe I've got too much paint built in here. You can easily clean that out at any time. All right. Now for the rocks, I think what I'm going to say is that the bottom of your rocks should be horizontal, but the tops can be as jagged as you want them to be. So if you don't have rocks drawn in, so for those of you who've got canvases from Smudge, I didn't do the rocks down here because you know what, they're easy enough for you to do, but I did do one down here just to kind of give you an idea. So you want to do the bottom horizon first or the straight line first. And then the upper line, I mean, the, this is your rock. You can decide how um, wavy or rocky it is, right? So artists, when you add in your rocks, I would say, um, so the further away something is, the smaller it will be. So let's just say, for example, I wanna add a little rock in here. It doesn't even have to be perfect. So don't worry too much. Maybe I want to add in a rock here. Honestly, this is like Bob Ross putting in his happy little trees. We're just putting in our happy little rocks wherever we want them to be. Maybe there's another one, I don't know. <laughs> Does have my Bob Ross <laughs> Maybe there's another one here. This is not what the original one looked like. I think I had them all kind of going together. I think I like that, like that. I don't want to get too crazy here. Oh, see, painting from the side, my rocks go crooked. Right. It's not a big deal because rocks are crooked, honestly. Yeah, I think I'm good with that. Artists, you decide it's your masterpiece. What I am going to say, though, is do spread out any bloops or blobs that you may have going on without wrecking your piece. And make sure that your edges are really crisp. Nice, clean, crisp edges will make or break your silhouette, honestly. All right, I'll let you guys work on that for another minute or two. Um, our next step is going to be to add some white in our water. So you'll want to make sure you have a really clean brush. I'm still going to use my medium brush, but I'll let you guys work on your rocks. And then we're going to move on to some white in the water. So again, clean your brush really, really, really well. You don't want to have gray waves, okay? All right, artists, so I'm going to go on to the next step. Don't worry if you're not there yet. You're just filling in black paint, okay? So that's all that you have to think about is where you want your black paint to go. The first step that I'm going to do with the white is where my sunshine is. I'm just going to add in just almost like a, I don't want to say a scribble, but I guess it kind of is, a white, um, a few horizontal lines going back and forth closer to my sunshine. These ones can be pure white. I think I have pure white in here. So using my medium brush and using my brush on its side, not on its face, because I want to have nice thin lines, I'm just going to add in some white horizontal streaks closer 
to my sun and I'm going to bring it down a little bit. You're probably like, Paige, why are you using white? Well, I feel that when the sunshine glistens off of the water, it's, it's really white, right? It's not um, really yellow, it's, a, it's really white. So we're gonna add some, some white. Yeah, I probably filled in a little too much. You don't have to fill in that much. So we're just gonna do horizontal strokes uh, closer to the sunshine just to give it a little bit more of a glisten. Do you know what, maybe take that right up to your horizon line and go all the way across. There we are, all the way across underneath your sun, not all the way across your horizon line. All right, now this is fun. Okay, so once you've added just a few lines in underneath your sunshine to get a little bit more glistening, now we're gonna attach. So if you're not there yet, don't worry, just take a look. You're going to get some white paint on the tips of your bristles. And anywhere that we did these um, peach waves, we are going to tash in some frothing. Don't be too straight with this um, because these are waves. And you may, that may have been a little too long. I think I had two lines there. And so I have some stray um, brush bristles going on, but it looks kind of cool. It makes it look like more of a splashy. So again, artists, anywhere where we did these um, peach lines, and it doesn't have to be everywhere, remember? Like if you're like, no, Paige, that's too much. You don't want to do that, then don't do it. This is your masterpiece. You are the master of your masterpiece. Oh, I like that. I should get that, put that somewhere, right? <laughs> You're the best. <gasps> Maybe that should be our new slogan. Hmm. So we're just going to tash in some pure white right over top of, of these peach lines that we did. See, mine aren't even perfectly straight, artists, and you don't even need to go all the way across. I want you to think of this as the wave rolling. I'm not sure I understand. <laughs> Sorry, Siri. <laughs> Apparently, Siri was listening to me. Um, <laughs> you want to think of this as the wave rolling, right? Or the caps on the waves. You can add a few, like way out here, maybe, right? Closer to the sun if you want. Remember, the further away something gets, the smaller it is. Whereas up here, these are bigger waves, so you can always make them bigger and maybe more prominent than you did in the back. I mean, really, it just means that it's a, it's a big wave then, right? I think the trick, though, is to make sure that these go straight across, like that they're not diagonal again. It's a wave, right? Whenever we paint nature, I always have to remember, Mother Nature is not perfect. She is beautiful, but she's not perfect. And so, what I am going to say is when you get near that black, just be very careful that it is dry. We're going to add in some splashes around our rocks, too. Now, artists, if you don't like this, like if you, if you don't want to do this, then please don't. I think I'm just going to go down here a little bit. So all this does is it makes it look like your waves are breaking. And one way down here. You're just tashy. Oof, that was a big tash. And you can add more if there, even if there isn't a peach line. Yeah, I think 
think that's good. Remember to take a step back. Actually, this reminds me of a Hawaiian shirt my husband had. Hmm, funny. I wonder if he still has it. All right, artists, when you're done tashing in your waves, uh, do take a step back, take a look to see if it's, if it's good. Don't worry, we're not done. We still need to add in our palm trees. We also need to add in some white around our rocks. Um, yeah, actually, artists, are your, your rock should be dry-ish around the edges, or do you want to wait on that? So all we're going to do, just so you know, is we're going to take some white just around the bottom of our rocks. That's it. I'll just show you, and you can decide if you want to do it now or you want to do it later. So um, just to kind of show that this is a coastline, and it's not even going to go all of the way, especially back here because it's so far away. I'm just adding in a little bit of white and only on the bottom. So don't go on the top and don't bring this around. We're only going on the bottom part of the black. So it, it doesn't even, it's not even all the way artists, okay? So I don't want you to take this all across your rocks. I mean, I guess it depends how close you want your rock to be. You know, if it's close, it's probably gonna be, there are probably gonna be bigger splashes. And you might take it across a little bit more, but the further away something is, it's not gonna go all the way across. Don't worry about this front rock. We're only going to do the rocks that are in the water. Okay, and all that is, is it just shows movement. or the water splashing on your rocks. So artists, we're just tashing in some white along our waves, and then we're just going to tash in some white on the bottom part of our rocks. So don't go above, don't bring it around, just on the bottom portion. And don't worry about this one in the bottom left-hand corner, okay? I'll let you guys work on that for another minute or so. And then we're going to go on to our palm trees. Now, palm trees. So what I will say about palm trees is the shape of them is so that they're generally thinner up top and then they widen a little bit on the bottom. For those of you who got outlined from me, you will notice that I just gave you one line because I want you to be in charge of how thick your line goes. So what I will say is always start, and anyone who's doing this, okay, so always start with your middle line or, you know, your, um, your think of it as your spine, right? That main line, now everyone's sitting up a little bit more straight, right? That main line of your tree, and then add to it to get your, um, your tapered effect up top and your widening effect towards the bottom. So you're going to start with your spine always. Anytime you do a tree, this is how you should do it. And then you're going to add to it. So I'm going to use my medium brush still. I want to get all that water out because if I don't, I'm going to have a black drips going down my canvas. You could do a small brush if you want to, but if I use my medium brush on its side, and I stand right in front of my canvas, and I take a deep breath, and I kind of hold my breath a little bit, you can either go from the top to the bottom, it doesn't matter. I usually like to go the way it grows. <laughs> I should put that one too. Man. And that is my spine, okay? So it doesn't have to be perfect. I am going to add to it. Maybe I'll do this one too. Okay, so artists, that's not my tree. That's just the spine of my trees. 
So anytime you do a tree, you always want to start with the center line, and then you're going to add to it. So I'm just going up and down my spine, widening as I get to the end, the bottom I should say. And you may want to take it higher up, that's entirely up to you, but I do want you to think of those, if you take it higher, just think your fronds are going to come from there. You don't have to do that. I just wanted to show you. Okay. Yes, this is a crooked one. <laughs> maybe I don't like where I put it now that I see where my son is, but who knows? Maybe I will like that. I don't know. But it, I know if you've been to an island, you've seen those ones that grow like outside or, or like sticking out of the hill and you're like, how did it get like that? I've seen those. Anyway, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So artists, you don't have to do three palm trees if you didn't get your outline from a smudge. You won't have your own, I don't think. Um, I don't think you would have. Oh, that's a little big. See, that's why I should just hold my breath and do this instead. You can decide how many you want to have, okay? When you're done with your trunks, your spine, I'm going to move on to my small brush. So again, I want to get all this gunk out of my bristles. I'm going to have to shampoo these soon. Um, there is brush conditioner that you can buy if you are doing this on a regular basis. I would recommend it. Brush, paint brushes are just like hair, right? Like you want to get your brushes clean, your bristles clean. You want to condition them so they stay so that they stay soft. And I'm going to go on to my small brush. So for my small brush, I am using my flathead brush. I like it because I can get really nice thin lines with this. But if you have a round pointed brush, that would work just as well, if not maybe even better. So when you think of a palm tree, um, you want to do the palms, the stem first of your frog, of your leaves, I should say. So you want to do the, the stem first, and then you're going to add in your fronds. The fronds seem to be the um, most difficult part of doing a palm tree. So when you do this, and even if you need to practice on your palette, Maybe I'll do that too. So let's say this is my stem. You always want your fronds to direct towards the end of your stem. Does that make sense? So, um, what some people will do is they'll go like this and then they'll come out like this and it just doesn't look as tropical as if you have them directed towards the end of your stem or yes, the end. The other thing that can get difficult is um, thinking about direction when they're on a tree. So, the only thing, so what some people will do is they'll try and get it blowing in the breeze. If you want to do that, fantastic. We're not going to, I'm not going to do that. Okay, so what I am going to do is I am going to do my stem first. Again, you always want to do the, the spine of your whatever you're painting. 
So there's one stem. Here's my other stem. And artists, don't be stingy with your palms. Like, when was the last time you saw a palm tree with only three palms? I'm gonna start with this one up top. Now maybe, I don't know if I like four, maybe I'll add five, but I'm gonna start with four for now. I can always add another one if I want to. Now, this is the trick. You wanna make sure that your bristles are always stuck together, right? So you can get that really nice thin line. You want your line to curve towards the end of your stem. Now the other thing is don't be stingy with your fronds, okay? Palm trees don't have just a few fronds. That's why they give you shade or that pretend shade if you've ever done what I've done. And I'm like, yeah, there's shade from the palm tree and there's really not. Um, so don't be stingy with your fronds either. So you want to make sure that your palm tree has coverage. So just start with one stem, one palm, and work your way that way. And yes, they can cross over top of each other. That's what happens. That's why they're so beautiful and they dance so lovely. So just always make sure that they curve towards the end. of your stem and add in more fronds if you want to like if you're like that's not enough just add some more maybe you want to add in a whole nother palm that's entirely up to Ooh, that's getting a little fluffy that's entirely up to you you may have to wipe rinse and wipe your brush out once in a while right I think I'm good with that one. So when you're done with one, you're simply gonna go on to another. We're gonna add our stem first. And yes, you're gonna go over top of your other trees. I mean, if they're there, right, you're gonna go right over top of them. So add your stem in first. And then your fronds, again, are going to curve towards your step, or the end of your step. Ooh, my brush is getting a little fat. I need to clean it out. Ooh, yeah. It's a lot of coverage there. If the paint builds up in your bristles, it is not going to work for you. You are not going to get those thin lines and you can see the big blob that I just made, okay? So um, you wanna make sure that the paint is always on the tips of your bristles and if it's not, clean your brush. Don't keep going like I did. And just enjoy laying down your fronds, your paint, and they are going to cross over top of each other, artists. They're wispy. So always go from the stem and curve towards the end.
So again, your fronds always want to curve towards the tip. I mean, there's probably other ways to do it. You don't know, think about the way that the wind is blowing. We're not going to think about that tonight. We don't want to think at all tonight. We just want to paint. I think I'm good with that. All right, so you always want to take a step back from your masterpiece to see if there's anything else you want to add. You know, I probably could go one more this way, but I kind of want to leave my son, I think. So your final step is to, going to be to go around and do any touch-ups on your black that you might need to do. I need to do a little bit here. You want to make sure that your black is filled in really well, that you can't see through it, that you haven't smudged any yellow in like I did there. So you may have to go back, or maybe you do want to go back and add a second coat. But after you're done all of your fronds, that's really your last step, is to go and check and make sure that your black is covered in. And that's it, artists. That's how easy it is to do that masterpiece. You guys are amazing. So seriously, smudgy sky. I would love to see if someone did this in a different color, but I'm a little partial to orange, of course. Um, so like a smudgy sky with wide, beautiful horizontal strokes, a smudgy water with um, thin, beautiful horizontal strokes. Then you've got, you know, you've added some waves in, you've added some rocks in, you've added some detail in. And just like that, you have a beautiful tropical masterpiece too. Um, but what I am going to say is when you are finished your masterpiece, if you wouldn't mind taking a photo of you and whomever you're painting with, and yes, I do want to see your faces as well, or if as we say goodnight, if you want to turn on your camera and show me, I'd love to see that too. Um, I think it's really important that we share our masterpieces, even if we don't love them. I mean, there's been lots of paintings that I haven't loved that um, someone somewhere else does, right? So it's just about sharing and just about having a good time. So I would love to see your masterpieces. All right, for your paint, if you still have them in your cups, I mean... <laughs> I have lots over the last couple of weeks that I just haven't used all that paint. So you can put the cup, the lid back on the cups and use them for our next masterpiece or maybe you want to do another masterpiece at home. Um, but what you do want to do is make sure that this paint doesn't go down your drain. So make sure that if you do, if you have used a palette or anything that you're wiping it off or if you just use a paper plate, just throw the whole thing out. Your brushes you can wash in warm soapy water. Make sure you get all of that paint out of the bristles or else it will dry like a plastic. And then you want to get the water out and lay it flat to dry. Reshape your bristles and lay them flat to dry. That's the best way that you can dry your bristles. Um, and as for your masterpieces, they will take two full days to dry. Acrylic paint generally takes 24 to 48 hours to be fully dry. So... Yeah, just kind of keep that in mind. So, artists, thank you so much for joining me.